telling you. His presence is thick in here right now. Come on, is, is, is he hugging you right now? Is he whispering into your ear? Come on. Is he encouraging your faith right now? Maybe you came in today with a little bit of hopeless. I'm, I'm telling you, he's, he's, re, he's rejuvenating you right now. He's whispering to you how much he's loved you. Come on, just let him squeeze you today, family. Come on. Happy Father's Day to our Father. Come on, somebody. Let him squeeze you today. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, you can remain standing. You can turn to Luke 8, verses 41. And we're going to read through 41 through 56. And happy Father's Day to all of the incredible dads out there. Can we put our hands together for all of our fathers out there? Amen, amen. I got a, I got a word, man. Amen. Ladies, if you don't mind, I... I the Holy Spirit was still going to speak to you today. Is that all right? But I, I, I got a word for the men in the house today. I, God has placed a word in my spirit today. I, I really want to lean in. Amen. I want to I want to challenge our guys today. Amen. I want to love on our guys today. I want to respect you as the man you are, but also believe in where God is getting ready to take you. Amen. Amen. God is going to speak today. Amen. Luke 8, verses 41, and it reads, family, just then a man named Jairus came. He was a leader of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and pleaded with him to come to his house because he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. While he was going, the crowds were nearly crushing him. A woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years who had spent all she had on doctors and yet could not be healed by any, approached from behind and touched the end of his robe. Instantly, her bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds are hemming you and pressing against you. Someone did touch me, said Jesus. I know that power has gone out from me. When a woman saw that she was discovered, she came trembling and fell down before him. In the presence of all the people, she declared the reason she had touched him and how she was instantly healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the synagogue's leader house and said, your daughter is dead. Don't bother the teacher anymore. When Jesus heard it, he answered him, don't be afraid, only believe, and she will be saved. After he came to the house, he let no one enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Everyone was crying and mourning for her, but he said, stop crying, because she is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him because they knew she was dead. So he took her by the hand and called out, child, get up. Her spirit returned and she got up at once. Then he gave orders that she, she be given something to eat. I'm going to camp her out right here in verse 56. Her parents were astonished, but he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. Family, if I can take the next few minutes, this all right, man, can I, if I can take the next few minutes, I want to title this message, Daddy Issues. Daddy Issues. Come on, look to your neighbor and just say, Daddy Issues. See, see, normally with this phrase, it's normally, it's normally a catch-all phrase used for women who have a complex or confusion or dysfunctional relationship with men which normally stems from a bad, non-existent relationship with their fathers. But we all understand here that women are not the only ones who have daddy issues. Men, sometimes we can have some daddy issues. And as we begin to allow the Holy Spirit to touch a specific area in our heart today, I really do believe that God has given us freedom today. I believe that God has given us breakthrough today. 
right where we may have some issues that the Holy Spirit wants to speak and break free from what you've been holding back on and send you in the direction of that he has called you to be. Yes, you may have some daddy issues, but your real daddy is here today. Your father is here today. Your father is here to speak to you. So even right where you may find yourself, a lot of times we don't confront our daddy issues until we experience failure in our life. It's when we experience failure in our life, we begin to realize the daddy issues that we have. For men, mostly it's not until we see failures. Let, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you so much for your presence. That we see and feel your presence here today. Speak to us. Open our eyes. Touch our hearts. Even where our hearts may be hardened. We thank you that your word goes in. It begins to divide. It begins to touch the very thing that needs to be touched. Let your word go in. Let us leave this place better than we have come in. We love you. We honor you. We thank you. It is in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Amen, amen, amen. You can go ahead and have your seats. Amen, amen. Amen. If there's any C kids, middle school and high school, you, you are dismissed right now. Your leaders are waiting for you. Fatherhood, fatherhood. Come on, family, speak to me today. Fatherhood. When I look at the definition of fatherhood, even being a dad now, and I, I'm a, a father of three boys, I have a 15 year old, got a 13 year old, and you guys know about the little balls, Princeton, the six year old, the balls of the family. When I think about fatherhood, family, See, fatherhood to me is the responsibility to provide provision and protection. See, normally these are my two natural instincts when it comes to fatherhood. But the more that I'm, as my, my, my oldest child is growing, I understand provision. I understand perfect, uh, protection. But I'm also learning more that normally we say that a woman is supposed to nurture, the mom's supposed to nurture the boys, the daughter. But I'm also learning more that a father is, is called to nurture as well. See, as, as my child begins to get, as my child begins to grow, I find myself nurturing with feeding him. But as he begins to grow, I find myself nurturing him with connection of what God is calling him to be. See, the more we lean into what fatherhood is, we understand that fatherhood is just not based on what bread are you bringing to the table. Fatherhood is all about provision, but it's more about money. It's all about adding provision of spirituality to the household. It's all about adding emotional, being a connection to your sons and your daughters. See, I understand this. As a father, when I look at the failures in my life, it normally goes back to, am I doing these two things? Am I bringing protection into the household? Am I bringing provision into the household? See, normally when it comes to these failures, I always look back at my relationship with my biological father, daddy issues. See, sometimes we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't tap into these areas until, like I said earlier, until we experience the failures. Could it be that the very thing that I'm going through in this season of my life because my father wasn't present? Or could it be a lot of times maybe your father was present, but maybe it's a bar of perfection, of perfection that you cannot hit. So now you're living through the eyes of somebody else trying to fix or trying to attempt to tap to an area of perfection and it's draining the joy that's inside of you. Either your father was present or maybe your father wasn't present. We will always have some daddy issues. See, what, what, what could be the daddy issues in your life today? My, I want to speak to the men. What, what, what could be the daddy issue? Because life will throw a curveball at you always, Julius. Life will always throw a curveball at you. And how we respond as men, I, I, I just don't want to talk to the, the dads in the house, but I want to talk to the men. How you respond when life throws a curveball at you. Life will always keep you on your toes. See, a lot of times when I look at my boys, I'm training them. I'm training them through teaching them, but also demonstration on how to respond when life throws different things at you. Amen. See, now when I, as I get older, I begin to say, man, maybe I'm not responding to the way that I'm supposed to respond because I was never taught. 
I was never trained. But here's the greatest gift, and I want to preach this, and then we're going to go deeper and a little bit deeper. Here's what I want to preach to you today, man. The greatest gift you can give yourself on today is the gift of not quitting. The greatest gift, yes, I will, the greatest gift you can give yourself on Father's Day is the gift of not quitting. When everything was going hard, I did not quit. When everything was breaking loose, I did not quit. When my marriage was on the rocks, I did not quit. When I don't know how to raise this child, I did not quit. Do not quit. This is what fatherhood is about. Write that on your tombstone when you leave. That man did not quit. That man stayed and he raised his chin. That man did not quit. See, daddy issues is all about, can I, can, would I not quit on my sons and my daughters? Amen. This is what the, the ability of a great man, because normally I say this this way, normally what you have been exposed to is normally what you will live out. Yeah. What are you exposing yourself to today, man? See, now you have to, if you wasn't exposed to it, you have to re-expose yourself to something. Yes. See, see, we, I, I find him more, yes, I, I love my father. He exposed me to some great things, but he's also limited because he's just, a, uh, he's just an earthly father. Yes. So the things that I was not exposed to as a man being 36 years old, I have to teach myself how to re-expose myself to greater things. I can't live in a space of limitation of what I was not touched with, what I was not trained with, what I wasn't learned to. I have to find myself in areas of my life if I'm going to be everything that God has called me to be, just like he has called you to be as a great man, a man of God who loves God, who adores God. You have to re-expose yourself to something. Expose yourself to greater your family deserves you to expose yourself to something greater. Amen. Find yourself in, in areas of your life being exposed to greater wisdom. Find yourself in areas of your life being exposed to a whole life emotionally, spiritually, physically exposing yourself. Because if the def- if my definition, if I say it this way, if my definition is based on what fatherhood is, based on my exposure, it will always be a limited definition. So now I have to find myself making sure I expose myself to my heavenly father. Teach me how to be a father. Teach me how to be a man of God. Teach me because maybe you grew up in a house where there wasn't no men, where there wasn't no man of God, where there wasn't no father, where there wasn't anybody who can walk this out. And here's what I'm teaching today. And we're going to dive a little bit about this man named Jairus who exposed himself to Jesus. Expose your vulnerability. Expose your weakness. Can I say it this way? Don't misconfuse your weakness for wickedness. Don't confuse your, a lot of times we will, we, will, we will live in failures in our life and we will begin to describe the failures in our life as wickedness. Every man in here has a weakness. Yes. Every man in here has a soft spot. The more we become vulnerable with God and show God, here's my weakness, here's my vulnerability, here's what I'm dealing with, God can touch only what you expose. Yes. Jairus brings his daughter and he said, hey, this is the very thing that's dying in my life. When I begin to look at this, this scripture, as we begin, I'm just setting it up. And when I begin to look at this scripture, normally, normally, family, we just, we deal with, of course, Jesus heals. He heals the woman. Jesus is a superstar. We understand that. We deal with this, that Jesus gives, we, we deal with Jesus. But all, sometimes we deal with the woman that got healed. Or sometimes we actually deal with the daughter here who, who got healed in the house. Charis on Father's Day, he never gets any credit. No, no one spends, spends time with what Jairus are on here. No one begins to seek him out. And I, I, I love this part of the scripture because you know what? I really want to know what was he feeling? What was he thinking? The very thing that he was called to love and protect and provide, provide provision was dying in his life. Men, you ever been in a season of your life where the very thing that you was called to do feels like it's dying? 
that you don't even know that this is a leader. He has provision. He has protection. Matter of fact, he has connection. And he's at a point in his life where he cannot fix this all by himself. He had to have an encounter with Jesus. Men, you ever been in a season in your life where you tried everything, but you can't fix the very thing that's dying in your life? It's dying. For him, it was his daughter. Maybe for you, it's your, your life. Maybe for you, it's your, you feel like your calling is dying. Maybe you're in a season of your life. For him, it was the daughter. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your career, that business that you don't, that you don't understand. That you can be winning in one season of your life, but at home is dying. I want to talk to some men in here to be very vulnerable with me today. That's been in a season or maybe you're in a season of your life right now where one thing is winning, but the other thing is dying and you don't know what to do. I'm here to celebrate you today. You're in the right place right now. Because of everything, when you can't fix it, Jesus can fix it for you. I'm so glad to read in the scripture that that he ran into Jesus on his way. While Jesus was helping somebody else, he brought the attention to Jesus. I tried every single thing that I can, but I'm going to you right now. Can you fix the thing that's dying in my life? My heart is dying. Can you fix it? My relationship with my sons and my daughter is dying. Jesus, can you fix it? Just at work, I don't know what, what my next look like. My career path, I've been down this path a long time. Jesus, can you fix it? I tried every single thing. Can you fix it? See, I want to talk to some men today that's looking for Jesus to fix something that they gave everything at, that you gave your all at, and you're looking for Jesus to fix it. Because here's the beautiful thing, family. Whatever you expose to Jesus, he can fix it. Whatever you begin to expose to Jesus, he can fix it in your life. I want to I want to preach it this way because there's three tests, men. There are three tests that men that we constantly have to give our undivided attention to. We have to be attentional with it that these are three tests that life will always throw at us. The first one here, write this down, the test of prioritizing. The test of prioritizing. See, this is a leader. He's, he has authority. He has power. He has leadership. But just like I said, maybe something was going well over here, but something is dying over there. And the better we begin to prioritize the very things in our life, the better we can be in life. See, when I look at the scriptures and I'm studying this, this individual that the father right here, that he's a, he, more likely he's a busy man. Maybe he made all of the recitals. Maybe he, he had um, tea time. I don't have a daughter. What, 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 do, what do men and daughters do? I have all boys. Maybe he had tea time with, 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 with his daughter. Maybe he was always there for her, but it's one specific thing that he can't help her with. See, here's what I want to here's what I want to say. Priority, prioritize is so critical in our life. Can I say it this way? The better men we we treat our yes as currency, the better we'll be in life. Your currency, your yes is expensive. Hear that today. And I, I got to preach. I'm going to preach it to Pastor Brendan because she preaches it to me. Here's my weakness. I say yes to everything. I say you get you. Have, I want to preach to the people pleasers in here. The better you get at saying yes and making sure you value your yes and not give your yes over to everything, the more you will actually will hold your yes and protect your yes because whatever you say yes to, you always say no to. You're saying no to something else. Protect your yes. Do not give your yes over to anything. I, if I say it like this, if you use your yes as currency, just like this, if, I, if someone comes and asks for a dollar, you'll give a dollar away, right, Marquise? Yeah, yeah you, 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 you take that dollar. Yeah. Somebody asks for a hundred dollars, you're going to ask some questions, right? You know, hey, I, you know, hey, I need to know. The price tag goes up. I need, I need a little bit more inquiry. I, I need, a, if it goes to a hundred thousand, matter, matter of fact, that's a, that's a business, for, uh, for a business plan. That's a proposal. I, I need you to bring a little bit more information my way. Because the value, it goes up. It goes up. 
Whatever you give your yes to, when you treat your yes just like it's currency, you will withhold, you will grab it and you'll protect it and you just won't release it to anything. Withhold your yes. Now here, I'm not teaching against generosity. We're a generosity church. But understand this, wherever God has graced you in, that's where he's going to flow at. If I'm not supposed to be over here and I'm saying yes to a lot of things over there, just because it's good don't mean it's God. Don't get confused in a season because you're doing good and you actually think it's God. God wants you to actually prioritize the very things in life. This is why I love Matthew 6.33. It says, seek him first. Put God first. Man, put God first in every single thing you do. But I want to take it a little bit further. Just don't put God first. Put God center in your life. Because I wear everything that whatever you're building on, you want to make sure that you're building upon that rock. Not just putting God first, because if I just put God first, here's, here's what I say when I just, when I put God first, I can put God first and then I can put my marriage next and then I can put my kids next. And then I can put my car, my, what, what I'm doing, a preacher, a pastor, a leader, an entrepreneur, I can put all of these things next. But if I just live linear with God and not actually center with God, so now, now my, my, my marriage gets God, my kids gets God, but everything else begins to kind of go down. You have to make sure that you are placing God at the center of what you're building on. Because now when I place him center, everything gets touched by God. Seek him first, but also place him underneath your feet on everything that you're building on. Put God first in it. He's your firm foundation. I'm going to say it again. Your yes is expensive. Treat your yes with the respect that it deserves. Don't just give it away to anything, man. Prioritize the right thing. What's the number one thing in your life right now? Whatever you worship, will you will value. Let me say it about whatever you value, you will worship. Whatever comes first in your life, what you will value, make sure, make sure your priorities are right. The second test is this, the test of persistent, the test of staying persistent. Look at the driver's daughter is dying here. Jesus stops. Jesus stops while driver's daughter is dying. And what I love about this text is that, that look, Jesus, that Jesus is walking there on their way back, back, back to his house. If something is dying in your life and Jesus takes a pause break to touch somebody else, can we read it through the lenses of what this, this father is going through? That something in his life is dying that's close to him. I thank God that the woman got healed. We love to, we love to talk about stretched out and she touched his robe. But at the same time, while she was stretching out, his daughter was dying. That's right. See, here's, here's the beauty about staying persistent. Persistent is learning how to press with patience. Are you in a season where God is teaching you as a man how to press with patience? This is a season, this is a moment, this is a moment where, where as a father, he could not fix the issue, and then he was in a moment where he had to watch other people get their blessing. He had to sit there and watch and wait and keep his eyes on Jesus. What's, this is the difficult thing. In a season where you know the very thing that you need, that God needs to touch in your life and you can't do anything about it. And he had to learn in a moment how to keep his eyes on Jesus while the very thing that he need blessed at home was dying. Can you keep your eye on Jesus in the middle of an interruption? He needed Jesus to get back to his house soon, quick, running out of time. And an interruption came in his life, and Jairus still had to keep his eye on Jesus. Can you keep your eye on Jesus when an interruption erupts and discommunicates your season in life? Here's the curveball, man. Life will throw interruptions in your life. Don't move, don't keep your eye, don't move your eye off of Jesus. Keep your eye on Jesus. Jesus is going to touch it. Jesus is going to heal it. Don't keep move your eye off of Jesus because he wants to touch you right where you are. 
Don't allow the interruption to happen. I put this down. Despite the interruption, Jairus never takes his eyes off of Jesus. His blessing was right around the corner. He didn't even know his blessing was right around the corner. Matter of fact, when, matter of fact, when they came in, they said, you know what? Don't even bother him anymore. She's dead. It's over. Curtain's in. It's over. It's nothing else to do. You ever been in a season of your life, man, where you just feel that the curtains just closed in? Time ran out. It's nothing else to do. And here's what I love what Jesus said. Just what Jesus said. He said, believe. Men, do not ever lose your hope with believing. Keep believing that God can work the miracle. Keep believing that God is right around the corner, that he's getting ready to touch you, that he's getting ready to change the story. Don't lose your hope. Because why? Because Jesus is on the way. That Jesus is on the way to touch the very thing that you need him to touch. Do not lose your hope. Despite what the noise may say, despite what the world may say, despite what your eyes may see, the negativity may say one thing, but I thank God that Jesus is saying, believe. Do not lose your hope on the very thing that you need Jesus to touch in your life. Keep hoping. Keep believing. Keep praying. Stay persistent. Stay persistent to the very thing that he has called you to. And the last test is this. The test of privacy. The test of privacy. They say it takes a village to raise a child. I like to say this, man. It takes a village to be a great day. See, Luke 8, 50, verses 52, it says this. When Jesus heard it, he answered him. Don't be afraid. Only believe and she will be saved. After he came to the house, he let no one enter with him except Peter, John, and James and the child's father and mother. Everyone was crying and mourning for her, but he said, stop crying because she is not dead but asleep. Be very careful who you give permission to to camp inside of your camp. How's your village, man? Who's in your village? Be very careful who you give a ticket to, to be, in, to be inside of your camp, to pray with you, to be on side, be your accountability partner, to be, begin to be with you, to think and think when you are going through something. Here's what Jesus did when he got to the house, man. Guess what he did? If anybody was mourning and believing that she was dead, it was time to get out the house. Be very careful who you hang out with if they're still mourning when they still when they should be celebrating. That's right. You have got to make sure your camp looks like heaven. Amen. I want to know who's in my camp. Yeah. Because when I'm when something's dying in my life, who can I lean on? Yeah. Who can I pray? Who can come along and pray? Who can come along and help me believe when I'm at my thick and thin, when I'm feeling like I'm in despair, I'm frustrated, I'm confused, I don't know what to do. I thank God that Jesus had Peter, James, James, and John to come alongside of him with the child mom and with the child father and believe. Who can you lean on right now? Are you in a season right now where you feel isolated? Where you feel as though there's nobody in my camp? That there's something that's dying right now, and I don't know who's in my camp. See, here's the beautiful thing that when Jesus got to the house, in other words, when I looked at it, is that Jesus allowed Peter, James, and John to go beyond the veil. To go inside it behind the privacyness. To go see the, the messiness of everything that's dying. The very thing that's not living right now, Jesus said, come on in. See, here's the beauty thing about this, man. In other words, if you have men in your camp, you have to allow them to go beyond, beyond the veil with you. You got to allow them to come inside your camp, to go inside of the other door and show them of everything that's dying right now. I need you to pray. I need you to, uh, I'm dying in this area right now. I'm dying, I'm seeking it in doubt. Pray with me. I'm seeking it, I'm dying in, in frustration. Pray with me. 
I'm dying right now in this specific area and I tried everything. I need you to go beyond the door and I'm calling you. Here's what Jesus did. Come with me so we can pray and touch the very thing that's dying and the very thing that Jesus is getting ready to touch to. He's getting ready to reach down and bring life into. The blessing is right here, but here's the most important thing also is who's in the room with you. Who's in the room with you that can pray with you? Not another season of you going and going by yourself, trying to bring life back to a dying thing, and you're trying to touch it by yourself. Daddy issues. Daddy issues. Here's what a daddy issue would do. It would tell you as a man, figure it out by yourself. Only a real man can figure this out by himself. Only a real man, a real man wouldn't go through this. A real man wouldn't have a dying thing in his life. A real man will always have a solution. A real man, here's what the enemy will love to whisper into our ears. Just because you have a weakness doesn't make it wicked. Yes, you have something dying, but here's the beautiful thing. Here's what God is saying. I'm right here. Your real daddy is right here with you. I'm right here with you. Maybe you didn't have a father to teach you how to be a a loving husband. Guess what? Your father's right here with you. Maybe you don't know actually how to be a man of God and you didn't have anybody that has to show you exemplify in your life. Here's the beautiful thing. Your heavenly father can show it to you. How do I do this? Your heavenly father can. Bring other men in your room with you. And here's the beautiful thing. We will figure it out together. What's the daddy issue in your life right now? See, these three tests will always bring you back to a limitation in your life. Prioritizing. Staying persistent. Privacy. These are three tests. If we're failing at, here's what it would do. It would raise up. You know what? I just don't got it. I just don't got men. A lot of times we are so, we're more harder on ourselves than we should be. But here's the beautiful thing: you're not by yourself. You are not by yourself. Make sure you're not living in your thoughts by yourself. Be in the room with other men. Here's the beautiful thing about Celebration Church. We got some good men in here, but we also got some weakness as well. And the more we come together and the more we talk about it and the more we begin to see what God can do in ourselves, we got to get beyond the veil and expose what we're going through because for everything that you have overcome, another man in here needs to hear your testimony. Another man in it needs to hear you know what? I went through a divorce. How do I get through this? I'm struggling with raising my sons. How do I do this? I've been married to my wife a long time. I don't know what to do. Our marriage is on the rock. How do we do this? The more we we go beyond the veil and expose what we're going through as men of God in the house, God can only heal what you expose. Go beyond the veil. As I close this out, and here's the powerful thing. When I close with Luke 8, 53, 56, it says this in 53, they laughed at him because they knew she was dead. So he took her by the hand and called out, child, get up. Her spirit returned and she got up at once. And then he gave orders that she be given something to eat. Her parents were astonished. But he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. We can rise on our feet. Here's the beautiful thing, man. He told him to get up. To get up. To get up. What's the thing in your life right now that you need God to speak to and say, get up? What's the thing in your life right now that you feel as though that is dying? and God wants to speak to. What's that area in your life right now that you, matter of fact, you just swept away that you don't even want to think about anymore? Maybe it's a childhood memory. Maybe it's a disappointment. Maybe, maybe I just want to even speak to the fatherless men in here. Maybe not hearing the voice of your father. So that little child is just dying. And here's what God is saying. 
here's the beautiful thing. Here's what Jesus said, and it hit me even more this morning. For every disappointment, for everything that's done in my life, this is what Jesus did. He instructed the father to go give him the daughter something to eat. Here's what the Holy Spirit told me this morning. He said, Anthony, I will never tell you to go feed something that's dead. I will only instruct you to feed something that's alive. Here's the beautiful thing about that. She wasn't dead. She wasn't dead. What's the very thing in your life right now that Jesus is still speaking to? Maybe he's still speaking to it because it's not dead. Maybe he's still speaking to it because it's alive. It's still breathing. You, 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 you forgot about it. You washed it away. But here's the beautiful thing. He's still speaking to it. And he's still saying, get up. It's time to get up. It's time to rise up. It's time to be the very thing that he has called you to be. Don't give up because he's speaking to it. He said, matter of fact, go give it something to eat. In other words, what that means, go feed it. Go feed it. Here's what we do as men. We just don't lay back down. Feed it. We keep feeding it. We keep believing. We keep pushing. We keep striving. We do not quit. The greatest gift you can give yourself, your family, your neighbor, your community, the next generation, as a man, is don't quit. Keep feeding it. Keep feeding it. So get ready to close out in prayer this morning. One of the beautiful things even the Holy Spirit whispered to me, and I, I love that I love that our, our Bible is not written in our culture because a lot of time in Western civilization, the words of a father can be dismissed. But I love that, that, that the Bible was re- written where we read it from the Hebrew, the Hebrew culture, the words of a father mean something. It means something. And, 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 and as we we read through the scripture, we can see the importance of the words of a father. And as I was reading early, and I can, ju- I can just hear the Holy Spirit just say, honor the words of a father. So even, even, even in a culture, this is not even my notes, I don't even know why God is leading me this direction, but the right hand of blessing, it, it means something. It's a bestowed, it's an authority, it's, it's dominion, it's, it's honor, it's, it, it, it means something. Matter of fact, when a father speaks over his son, we can see through the scripture, he will bestow the right hand, and his words came. It was, a, it was provision, it was protection. See, here's the beautiful thing. When, when God, here's, here's what I'm setting up, and here's what I want you to get. Even with your daddy issues, your father is still speaking. That your father is still speaking. Even in the absence of your earthly father, I thank God that the heavenly father is still speaking some words. That he's still speaking some words on you. That he's still covering you. That he's still loving you. Even in every space that's void, his words goes there. In every space that became harder, his words go there. In every space of not hearing the voice of maybe my earthly father, I thank God that my heavenly father is still speaking. Or even where I heard the words of my earthly father, I thank God that my heavenly father is still speaking to me. So he takes his right hand and he bestowed and he touched Here's what I believe today, family. For every man in here, just just raise up your right hand. For every man in here, just just raise up your right hand. And as we begin to pray, stretch it forth. And here's what you're praying for. Here's what you're praying for is that the words of God will rest in your heart. Rest in that soft place. Words of God will rest in that place where that young child lives. That young boy lives. 
take the words and of everything that was hardened, here's what I believe the Holy Spirit is doing, is breaking it up right now. That freedom is present right now. That chains are being broke right now. That God is calling you to take your step because why? You never gave up. You are still pressing through. That right now, the very thing that you need, just as the father brought the daughter to Jesus so that his daughter can be healed, as a father, we raise our hand and we continue to do the same thing. Father, I bring my family to you, Jesus. Father, I bring my life to you, Jesus. Father, I bring my finances, this business, this leadership. We bring it to you, Jesus, and we ask that you touch our our heart touch of everything that we need. Only Jesus can fix it. Hear my heart today. Don't ever move from that spot. Only Jesus can fix it. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. We glorify your name in here. That on this Father's Day, even where the issues that we have, we thank you that you are touching of everything that we need. We glorify your name. We thank you that chains are being broke right now, that we are getting up, that we are rising up, that we are believing for more, that we are honoring you and we are breaking forth. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, give us freedom in the very thing that we need, that we are called to be great men, that we are called to make a difference, that we are called to lead our family, that we are called to bless and honor and show bestow love upon our sons and our daughters and the next generation. You have given us something. Touch us and give us the very thing that we need. We glorify your name. We honor you. There's nothing like you. For every issue that may rise up today, you are a good, good father. You're a good, good father. And you feed us over everything that we need. We love you. We honor you. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen. You can put your hands together. Such a great word. Such a great word. Um, Pastor Ann, thank you for exposing me. Thank you. Church, this is a right now word, okay? Um, I don't take anything away from the fathers because I'm a father myself. Um, But I have daddy issues. I'm not talking about my earthly father. When I didn't get that job, I said, Father, why not me? When my bank account was empty, I said, Father, why me? When my car wasn't working, I said, Father, why not me? I had daddy issues, and when I was persistent, I didn't make him a priority. And when he was a priority, I wasn't persistent. And I'm a private person, so I didn't, I didn't want to expose myself as if I had the problems. See, when I thought I had that issues, I had a Julius problem. I didn't surrender myself. I didn't make him a priority. I wasn't persistent. And I didn't expose myself. So thank you for exposing that, not just for fathers, but for everybody. Saints, the chains are breaking. I've been in bondage. You might be having daddy issues. God, why me? Father, why me? Surrender yourself. The chains of bondage will break. It's not about what you keep in your heart no more, but expose yourself. Be persistent with his love. Make him a priority. Let him be the center of your life, and these chains of bondage will break. That job will come. Your finances will come. The relationships will come. We don't have daddy issues because he said he'll never leave us or forsake us. He has always been there. When we didn't recognize him as daddy all the time, we were still his children. We were still his children. Father, we just ask that you would break these chains of bondage. We just ask that you would touch. Thank you for being our ultimate father, for not leaving us, for not deserting us, Lord, when we didn't deserve your love when we didn't deserve your care. Lord, when we didn't make you a priority, you made us first. When we weren't persistent enough to pray, to fast, to give you everything, you never left us. Father, we wanna make a public confession that you are Lord and you are Savior. Father, these chains of bondage that's on us, free us from it, Lord. Free us. 
You have always been there, Lord. You have always been there, Father. Bless, bless, bless. In Jesus' name. Amen. Church, let's give. All right? There's a, there's a few ways to give. Um, our ushers will be going through. Feel free to drop something in the bucket. We have ways to go online. We have apps. It's 2022. I think my, my kids paid the church a little bit. That's good. Uh, but there's so many ways. And, and it doesn't matter how much you give. It doesn't matter how much you don't give. God blesses the giver. All right. There are a lot of things that we do between C kids, between outreach, a lot of things we do. And it's because of your generous donations and giving that we can continue to do this. Um, so you can text the number you see online to give. You can go to our app. You can go to our website. It doesn't matter how you give. Um, you're giving the hands the kingdom of God. Let us pray over the offering. Father, we come to you to honor you and bless you. Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity. Thank you for giving us the blessing to be able to give. Lord, everything belongs to you, Lord. So we're just giving what's rightfully yours back to you. We just ask that you would use this money to further your kingdom and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, dedications next week. So if you got kids five years and younger, family, this is a perfect time. Um, to surrender your kids to the Lord next next week, all right? Um, you can go online, go to the Connect card. So if you got babies five and five years and younger, okay, we can't put my son in there because he just learned how to swim, but we don't need him swimming around and splashing past the ant. If you want to dedicate your, your, your beautiful babies to the church and to surrender them to the Lord, uh, please stop by the, the, the station outside talk to somebody about dedicating your babies go online find out all the tons of information on how to do so amen amen here we go no let's switch it out take two there we go how's it going church uh, some of you may know me some of you may not so uh, who's this crazy guy in the front my name is chris uh, i am the creative pastor here and i'm just here uh, very excited to basically call out all the creatives out there. Yeah. All the creatives, we need you. Now, what, what, is, a, what is a creative? Um, okay, well, if you can sing or play an instrument, guess what? You're a creative. Uh, maybe, maybe you're that guy, you've got the big home theater system and you're like really into technology and, or you're just like in drama. You're like that guy that's like controlling the spotlight and all this stuff, you know, CG, uh, you name it. You're not gonna believe this. You're you're a creative, also, um, or or maybe you're like me. You're that guy that likes to uh, to sneak around and, and grab pictures of people when they're not looking. That was a little creepy, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't be a creep. Be a creative. Uh, we are calling all of you guys to come and join us on our team. We need you. Um, it is a great opportunity to further develop your skills, to get to know community of other creatives. Um, it is a diverse background, all different backgrounds, all different ages. Come and join us. We would love to have you. And the church needs you. The church needs you. This church is growing. Some days it's obvious, some days it's less obvious, but it is growing. And we need to grow with it. God wants, God has a big vision for this church, but we need you to be able to accomplish it. So if you're interested, guess what? You can also sign up by uh, going to um, our website. Uh, you can sign up using our, our Connect card, um, or you can go to the Connect station in the lobby. You can just tell them, hey, I want to join the creative team. Um, for our online audience, you can go into the description area, and there is an area where you can go to our website and just go to uh, the, the link that says serve and you can sign up there. Uh, but that also leads me to the next announcement, which is very exciting. This is a big moment for creatives. We are having our first creative team night for the year. It is coming up in a week and a half. It's so exciting. So if you are interested, if you're one of those people that falls in any of those categories, this is a great opportunity to come check us out get to, uh, you know, find out who else is, is on the team and, and get to know one another, uh, get to hear a little bit about the vision for the ministry and all the different areas that we are wanting to press forward in. Um, we'll have like light snacks. We'll have some games. It's going to be a great chill time. 
So no pressure, but make sure you're there. Uh, so uh, it's going to be taking place on uh, Thursday. That is Thursday, June 30th. 7 p.m. Uh, it's going to be located in Old Town at our church office, so we can get you the address and all that stuff. If you want to get those details, all you have to do is text. There's a number that is on the screen, and uh, there it is. Yep, yep, 703-703-844-1223. Uh, text that number, text creative, and you'll get all the details that you need, uh, and it's going to be awesome. So make sure you're there. And from that, I'm going to pass over to Archbishop. Julius. Uh, uh, all right, so uh, I'm just loud. I can really stream. Uh, uh, along with Father's Day, let us not forget today is also Juneteenth um, holiday. Thank you, Joe Biden. Um, but 1863, slavery is abolished two years later. Um, slavery was really abolished for those folks down in Texas who, who didn't know that they had freedom for the last couple years. Um, but I want everybody to understand the most important race in this world is the human race. And it doesn't matter what shade you are. Um, we are all children of God. None of us look the same. And thank you, Jesus, that we can celebrate a Juneteenth uh, and a Father's Day. So I'm super excited today for obvious reasons. All right. Um, fathers, um, men who are not fathers, but may be fathers soon. Um, maybe you're not a father, don't want to be a father, but you've given some fatherly advice. Um, pretty much if you're a man, stop outside um, at, our, our, at our stations out there. We have some gifts for the men. I wanted to make sure that happened because women get everything for Mother's Day and as men going to get something this year. So men, please stop out there and grab you something. All right. Um, let me uh, let us let me pray us out. Uh, father, we come to you to honor you, to bless you. Lord, we just, we just thank you for who you are. Father, we say today that we will make you priority. We say today that we will be persistent in, in who we are to you. And Lord, we don't want to live in privacy, but make a public confession of who you are to us. We just ask that you would bless every father here. We just ask that you would give safe travel and mercies as we leave your place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you all next week.